What's up, beautiful people? I finally filmed an eyeshadow tutorial for you for this look. I've been procrastinating and putting it off, but I finally had the energy today. So let's get into it. So I always start with my brows. We're going to start with the NYX Brow Glue. This is in the shade Medium Brown. I'm just going to fluff up the brows. Next, we're going to use an eye base. This is a concealer. This is the House Labs concealer. You can use concealer, or if you have an actual eyeshadow primer, use an eyeshadow primer. I'm going to be using this Natasha Denona Mini Xenon palette because it has all of these cool tones, and this is the only palette I'm going to be using. So if you have the full-size Xenon palette, the Mini Xenon palette, you can use that, but you don't have to have this palette, just any cool tone grays and blacks that you might have in your collection. Also, I have to be really careful because this black shade falls out. It's not in the pan. That's why it's broken. It's not because I've used that much, it's because it fell out of the pan. So we're going to first take this shade over here, which is like a bone color shade, on a nice fluffy blending brush. Tap off the excess, and I'm going to set the concealer all over my lid using this shade. And I'm going to use the same exact brush and dip into this shade right next to it. That's a bit of like a light blue-gray kind of a color. And we're going to apply this right here in the crease. Starting in the outer corner, I like to just pat so I can get the pigment down. And then I take the end of the brush so that you have the most control and I start windshield wiper motions back and forth. And you're gonna do this until you're happy with the blend. I do like to bring it into the inner part of my eyebrow, just so that it pushes my eye back and gives me more space to work with. And then I'm going to bring this out on the outer corner as well, so that it gives us like a nice winged out smoky shape. I'm also going to take the same color and run it along the lower lash line as well. And then when that's blended to your liking, we're going to take another fluffy blending brush, but this one's a little bit smaller and defined. It's dirty. It is what it is. That's real life. We're going to dip into this darker gray shade right here. And my personal key to using dark shadows is less is more. Start with a little bit and build on top of it. We're going to apply this right here on the outer corner again, just pressing it where we want it. And then I'm going to start blending it into the crease, but not taking it too high. We want it to be lower in the crease. Another thing about using dark eyeshadows, I recommend that you start with your eyes. If you're going to do a dark smoky eye, I recommend that you start with your eyes so that way you can clean up any fallout and you can make it nice and sharp before you go in with your foundation, concealer, whatever you use. And now we're going to use that same shade again on the lower lash line. And then I always like to take the original brush that I used for the transition shade and just brush over everything just to make everything look a little bit more seamless and blended. Next, we're going to take the black shade, and here's where you can kind of decide what you want to do. It depends on how dark you want the smoky eye to be. You can either use a pencil brush, or you can use like a flat smudger definer brush. I'm gonna use the pencil brush today because I do want to use a little bit more black, so we're just gonna pick up a little bit of that. And we're gonna start really low on the lash line and just start smudging that into the lash line. I'm gonna actually take it like into my lashes. The flat smudger brush is great if you just want to do like a little liner right here, but the pencil brush is good if you do want to bring it into the crease as well, which I'm going to do today. So I'm going to take just a little bit more of this black shade on the pencil brush and we're going to work it into the crease little by little, just a little bit. We don't want it to be too overpowering or too dark, but I do want to add a little bit more smokiness. So we're just going to wiggle and scratch and then start to bring it up into the crease. I'm also going to take the black on the lower lash line, but I'm going to keep it very tight to my waterline. And then we're going to take the first two brushes again and reinforce and blend everything together. Going back in with these brushes with no additional product on them just helps to make everything look a little bit more airbrushed and clean. I really feel like this is probably the secret to when people are always like, your eyeshadow looks so blended and so airbrushed. I really think it's because I go back in with the other brushes that I use with no additional product and just kind of blend everything together. 
And now we move on to my favorite part, the shimmer. We're going to take this really beautiful silver color in the center, and we're going to apply it with a brush, just a nice flat brush that looks like that. You can use this dry or wet, and we're gonna use it dry first. You can also carve out the crease if you want to, but I feel like I did a pretty good job today of not making a mess, so we're just going to apply the shimmer right here in the center. And then again, I'm going to take one of the brushes that I used for one of the darker colors, and just kind of scratch over where the shimmer meets the matte eyeshadow from before, just so that everything blends together and there are no harsh lines. And that's what the eyeshadow looks like. I'm gonna show you what the shimmer looks like wet because I wanna see what it looks like wet. I normally just use it dry like this because it's stunning, but this is a trick that you can use to make your shimmers pop a little bit more if you want a little extraness, a little extra pop. We're gonna take the same silver shimmer and then you're gonna grab any setting spray that you have. I'm using the Milani Make It Last Original and we're just going to spritz. And then we're going to apply it to the lid. I don't think it really changes much. I mean, it's a teeny tiny bit more foiled and metallic, but I really think that this shade is great on its own without a setting spray, you can use it dry. That's the eyeshadow all done. I'm going to fill in the rest of my brows now using this Milani Brow Pencil Precision Brow in Medium Brown. You could take a makeup wipe and clean everything up and make this really sharp if you want to. I'm just not in the mood today and it doesn't look that bad in my opinion. So I'm gonna go into lashes now. I'm gonna get an eyelash curler and we're going to curl the lashes first. I highly recommend curling your lashes before putting on mascara. It makes such a world of difference. And sometimes I won't even wear mascara. I'll just curl my lashes for the day and I feel like it makes such a difference. This is the before and this is the after. Just curled them one time. I did just poke myself in the eye with these eyelash curlers, so be careful. Little trick for you, if your eye does start to water whenever you're doing eye makeup and you don't want to ruin your eyes, obviously, just tilt your head back, blink a little bit, a little bit, and the water should go back into your eye just so you know. Then I'm going to go in with mascara. This is the CoverGirl Clean Topia in Ultramarine Black. So it has like a blue black kind of a tone to it and I really like it because I think it looks really good with the cool tone eye. And I'm just going to apply this to the lashes. I haven't been wearing false lashes. I actually haven't worn false lashes in probably like a year or so. I used to wear false lashes all the time when I did my makeup but I don't like them on me anymore. And I really like my natural lashes just with the mascara. I think that it looks pretty and it's enough for me. But if you like false lashes, this would be the perfect time for you to apply a false lash after you put on your mascara. I'm just not going to do that. All right, and this marks the end of the tutorial part. I'm going to go finish my face off camera and I will be back with the finished look. And this is the finished look. I really hope that you liked it. I love this look so much. I've been wearing it a lot lately. Thanks for asking for the tutorial. Thanks for inspiring me to make a tutorial for you guys. If you do decide to recreate this for yourself, tag me in a post or send it to me. I would love to see it. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself, stay hydrated, and I will see you next time. Peace.